Hey guys, this is Cody Jones with Jangus Genetics LLC. We wanted to take you along on working sheep today. We've got the ram lamb sorted off and we're gonna band a few and uh, keep a few for our own and maybe possibly sell some this year too. Um, we've got really good crop of lambs, best we've ever had. And we're going to vaccinate the ones that we banned. And then we've got two markers, uh, pink for the ones that we're gonna keep for ram lambs, orange for the ones that we're going to band and keep. And then the ones that we don't, uh, we'll end up selling at the sale barn for meat. Um, and we're also going to put a tag in the in the ram lambs that are the best ones. So that way we can identify them in the future when we go to sell them. And I think that's all we got. So let's get to it. Um, so basically what we're doing, I went ahead and tagged all the twins uh, that came in the first week or so. Um, and those will be the ones that we want to keep for our ram lambs. They'll be the most fertile. And, uh, you know, the twinning thing is important. We try to make sure that we keep that percentage up in our crop. So uh, I kind of like the, the white or the lighter colored rams where it gets real hot here in Missouri. And this sheep is, he's pretty hot. They've got some, they got a little bit of Dorper, a little bit of Katahdin, and a little bit of St. Croix in them. And uh, so we're just kind of selecting naturally what, what works well on our farm. And this guy, he's going to make a good... Uh, good meat product for us. So we've got three categories. We're going to keep some to use, the best ones to use is ram lambs, uh, the most fertile, the best looking ones, ones that shed out and are twins. And then we got some that we're gonna keep and try uh, doing some gra more grass fed lamb. And those are gonna be, you want a good, it takes a good individual uh, ram to make a good meat product in the end. So we're gonna band them, give them a shot of uh, tetanus toxoid and we'll uh, run them on grass until next fall. And uh, we'll, we'll have a processing date then. They'll be really good, really good meat. Um, and then the third one, the ones that maybe are a little bit less quality, we're gonna go ahead and sell those at the sale barn. Uh, someone else will eat them. But uh, we, don't, we don't really have anything I'm disappointed in this year. We're, we're getting a really good product and uh, done a good job of culling. And uh, most of these lamb, lambs look really good. So that being said, this guy, he's gonna, gonna get banded. Go ahead and get on up here, Donna. So uh, we just got the little green bands. You wanna make sure you get both testicles and uh, make sure they stay in there. You don't wanna get the teats in there. There you go. And this is a good good big animal we're gonna give him eli here is helping us out he's gonna give him a shot of the tetanus toxoid just give it under the skin don't press through keep going don't get your finger there we go um and then i've got markers oranges for grass-fed lamb so he's done on to the next right, what we have here is a ram that we're going to keep and uh, use uh, main thing we're looking for is is fertility so this one uh, the mom was in the uh, lamb twins within the first few days of the lambing season um, we've got to tag those we got good testicles he is not the biggest ram in here and a lot of that has to do with he's a twin so twins are a little bit smaller um, but that's okay because mama's raising too, so that's to be expected. Um, other than that, he's got good good body conformation. He's pretty thick. And we're going to put a tag in him. Uh, number 18 right there. These are Y-Tex tags. Uh, not a huge fan of them. They, don't, they, they seem to last pretty decent on sheep, but don't like to use them on cattle. Uh, so, Eli, show them how you're doing right there. So, take this, put it on here. Yep, put it on pretty tight. Bring this. Maybe it, it'll this. slide all the way on. Then, that goes in there like that, clamp it down. When you put them on, slide that on pretty tight. That keeps it from flopping around. Um, then you're going to put it in the middle rib.
I'm gonna put it in the middle rib kind of part way through, so. Facing back again? Yeah. Uh, there? Yeah, squeeze it hard. Both hands. There you go. Perfect. And then uh, make sure that everything's together with these uh, two piece tags. Make sure that it's over the, the lip there. And he's good to go. We're gonna mark him with a pink one. Showing that he's one we're gonna keep. Off he goes. All right, this lamb right here is a perfect example of a seller. One we're gonna take to the sale barn or someone's gonna eat him. Um, he was born out of season. He's he's uh, got a lot of Texel in him. I tried a Texel ram oh, four or five years back. And uh, so they won't ever shed, and that's really hard on them in the heat of Missouri. Um, so I don't want to keep him for, for grass-fed beef, but he's pretty heavy. So if you were just doing terminal cross, this would, this would be a good way to go. Um, he's going to sell really good. We're not going to do anything to him. Oh, we got to put in a scrapey tag. So if you're selling them off farm, you've got to have a scrapey tag on them. They'll give them to you at the sale barn, but uh, yeah, but they're going to charge you for it, so it works the same way, tag goes on, and you can get these, uh, I think the, I don't know if it's the USDA or what, give them to you free, but the main thing is make sure the tags line up, they both have a same number on them. I'm sure they still give these out for free, but the government issues them for. If you don't have one, they charge you for them at the sale barn, so. He's done. He'll be a good good sale round. Ah. Since we've got our three categories here um, for our own grass-fed meat, the ones that we're banning, uh, it's good to pick out the big ones. A lot of those were born single, which doesn't matter in the meat products. So this is one of those. He's a good, good big lamb. Yeah, our, our uh, bander loaded up here. He's going to be a big one. You got him? Got him both? <laughs> there you go. He's a little bit easier than those little ones. Maybe, yeah, twist that thing out. Maybe. There you go. All right, got that done. We're going to give him a shot. Can you give it? Are you in? As long as you don't push it through the other side, you'll be all right. Or just for banded so he's done a lamb it's a good example of what we're looking for um, main thing is we want highly fertile animals uh, that are gonna make good meat and uh, we talk about adaptability is the the main thing that I'm looking for so something that's gonna do it on our farm in our in our environment um, and also sell good in our in our uh, local area a lot of the commercial breeders are using solid white ram lambs um, so that's what we're that's kind of what we're keeping to sell. There's some color coming on. It's kind of getting popular, but this is a... We started off, we tried a few different breeds, um, but it seems like the faster that we grow them, the faster they grow, the uh, more parasites they get. So we want a good, we want a good final product, but something like these good little, little hair rams like that, or good product um, so they've got a little what we've got now they've got a little bit of Texel or sorry they've got a little bit of Katahdin we've weaned out all the Texel and most of those have been sold so we've got a little bit of Katahdin a little bit of St. Croix and a little bit of Dorper and uh, we've had them long enough we're kind of starting to create a I don't know if you call it a hybrid or whatever but it just works for us um, 
and you can see they still got a little bit of color to them but that doesn't bother me a bit uh, the main thing is is fertility and adaptability and these little guys are coming out here they've got a good twinning percentage they're growing fast enough um, for our market and they're doing it all on grass with uh, with no supplements so that's what we're looking for